Adhikarana 5. Relative merger of fire, etc. Doubt. It has been ascertained in accordance with the context that the meaning of the text, fire gets withdrawn into the supreme deity, Chandogya 686, is that the fire of the dying man, which is under consideration, gets merged in the supreme deity along with the ruler, the vital force, the assemblage of sense organs, and the other elements. Now it is being considered what this merger actually is. Opponent. As to that, the conclusion arrived at is that the merger is absolute and of the thing itself in its entirety, for that is the reasonable position inasmuch as the deity is its material cause. For it has been established earlier that the supreme deity is the material cause of all things that are born. Hence, this attainment of identity is absolute and complete. Vedantin. To this we say, Sutra 8. Tadapite sansara vyapadeshat. Tat. That group of elements, fire and the rest, continues. A apite till final release. Sangsara Vyapadeshat. For there is declaration of the transmigratory state till then. Translation. That group of elements counting from fire continues till complete liberation. For there is a declaration of the continuance of the transmigratory state till then. That. The group of subtle elements counting from fire that supplies the basis for the organs of hearing, etc., continues till complete liberation, till liberation from the transmigratory state as a result of full enlightenment. For the state of transmigration is described thus for the ignorant alone. Some souls enter the womb for acquiring bodies and others follow the motionless in accordance with their past works and in conformity with their knowledge. Kata Upanishad 227 On a contrary supposition, all would become Brahman in an absolute sense, since at the time of death their limiting adjuncts would become extinct. In that case, all scriptures of injunction would be useless, so also all scriptures about knowledge. Moreover, the bondage that arises from false ignorance cannot be removed by anything apart from full enlightenment. Accordingly, though Brahman is the material cause, still the merger in existence, Brahman at death, occurs in such a way as to ensure the continuance of these organs, etc., in a latent state, so that they can re-emerge just as it happens during deep sleep and dissolution. Sutra 9. Sukshmam pramanatascha tatopalabde cha and sukshmam minute pramanataha in its size or measure tata such upalabde being the experience. Translation. That fire, as also other elements, is minute in its nature, as also in size, because it is seen to be so. And that fire, along with the other elements which constitute a habitat for the soul emerging out of its present body, must be subtle in nature and measure. It is thus that we gather from the Upanishadic declaration about its going out through the nerves that fire, as also the other elements, is a subtle element. It is possible for it to move through the nerves because of its minuteness in size, and it is unobstructed because of its fineness by nature. It is because of this fact, again, that it is not perceived by people nearby when it departs from the body. Sutra 10 no pamar de na taha. Na, not, is the subtle one destroyed. Upamar de na, by the destruction of the gross body. 
ataha, for this reason. Translation, for this very reason, the subtle body is not destroyed even when the gross one is. For this very reason, just because it is subtle, the other body, the subtle body, is not destroyed even when the gross body is destroyed through cremation, etc. Sutra 11 Asyaiva chopapatere shaushma eshaha This Ushma warmth Asya belongs to this subtle body Eva to be sure Upapate for that stands to reason Translation And this warmth belongs to this subtle body to be sure for that stands to reason. The warmth that people feel by touching a living body belongs to this one, to the subtle body, to be sure. Thus it is that when death takes place and the body still persists, heat is not perceived even though the other attributes of the body, like form, etc., persist. But it is perceived only when the body is alive. Hence, it stands to reason that this heat belongs to something other than the well-known gross body. In support of this occurs the Vedic text, It is warm indeed so long as it lives, and cold when it dies. Namaste. So, these four sutras provide a great insight and detail into the process of how the being, the soul, the Atman, uh, leaves the body at the time of death to go to a new body. Now, of course, this only applies to two classes of beings, those who are unrealized and those who have realized the relative Brahman, the qualitative Brahman. Brahman with qualities, Saguna Brahman. So, keeping this in mind, let us understand how this process occurs. Basically, the elements are virtualized. In other words, the gross body is made up of the gross elements, earth, water, fire, air, and space. But the subtle body is made up of the functions of those elements. For example, the function of fire is sight, because it gives light and reveals the form of objects. And in the same way, the function of space is hearing, because it conducts vibrations. It's a medium of all kinds of vibrations. So, in this way, the elements are virtualized, they become subtle, and separated from the organs that provide their gross functionality. For example, when we go to sleep at night, there's a period of transition between Jagrat consciousness and Svapna consciousness, dreaming. And if we observe this closely, we'll see that what happens is the functions of sight, sound, and so on are separated from the sense organs themselves and shift to the subtle realm, the realm of the mind. And then the mind cooks up a bunch of stories, <laughs> and this is dreaming, or svapna. Svapiti means he is sleeping. And svapna is the consciousness of dreaming, or being aware of thoughts as reality. Now, the subtle body is composed of four of the five koshas, or sheaths, around the conscious being. The fifth sheath is the gross body, the anamaya kosha, food body. But then you have the pranamaya kosha, manamaya kosha, vijnanamaya kosha, and anandamaya kosha. 
These four are subtle. They are not visible to ordinary material vision. Huh? Only to the subjective vision of the conditioned being. As he withdraws from the body, either during sleep at night or at the time of death. The same process is going on. So you can observe it within yourself, but you cannot see it in anybody else. For example, you know, watching somebody fall asleep is about like watching paint dry. You know? <laughs> it doesn't seem like anything is happening. But if you observe yourself when you're falling asleep, you can see all kinds of changes in your consciousness. And this is what you have to know. This is what you have to realize. It's not enough simply to hear from Shastra or, you know, hear from a video or something what is going on at the time of death or at the time of uh, going to sleep. You need to observe it in yourself for it to be real to you. And since these things happen every day, you know, actually is easy. You just watch, you pay attention and observe in terms of consciousness. What happens at the time of going to sleep? The consciousness withdraws from the gross organs and the subtle functions of those organs then is applied to the mind, to the mental space. Now, this is also going on while we're awake, when we're daydreaming or thinking about something. For example, reading a book. You know, have you ever gotten really absorbed in a good novel or something like that? And you can almost see like a movie or a television screen in your mind with all the action and the characters going on, isn't it? This is one of the wonderful things about reading that I enjoy so much. That within the mind, a whole virtual movie takes place that really dreams the action in the book or the explanations or whatever it is. I see diagrams <laughs> when I read any technical books, you know, including the books of the Vedas that talk about consciousness. So in this way, we can visualize the thoughts. And when there's no input from the gross senses, the physical eyes, ears, and so on, they assume reality, like in a dream. You think you're really seeing things. You think you're really doing stuff, going places and doing things and so on in a dream. But it's all happening in some virtual space in your mind. The proof is you can dream of something happening far away, you know, like in another country. And then when you wake up, Within a few minutes, the whole thing is gone. You can hardly even remember it. Well, wait a minute. Where was that country? Where was that city? Uh, I often dream of riding in a car or driving a car. Or like last night, I was dreaming about riding a motorcycle in India. <laughs> India is far away. Where, where was that India? Well, it was only a virtual India in my mind. This is the nature of dreams. This is also the nature of the subtle worlds. The subtle worlds begin with the worlds of the demigods, Bhuvaha and Svar, in the Vyaharitis of the Gayatri Mantra. But there are more. There are the worlds of the subtle creation, or the pure creation, as it's called in Lakshmi Tantra. And they are Maharlok, Janalok, Siddhalok, all the way up to Brahmaloka. Brahmaloka is the highest. And it is there that the permanent deities, like 
Vishnu, Shiva, Shakti, and so on, have their abode. So when we realize the uh, qualitative Brahman, the relative Brahman, uh, as he calls it, we get relative liberation, relative immortality. We get to go to this Brahma Loka, or some aspect of it, depending on the deity that we worship, and live until the end of the universe. And after that, we, along with all the demigods and gods and everybody, are absorbed back into the Nirguna Brahman. So this is the actual result of study of the Vedas and sadhana and all good works, is that we are promoted to not just the heavenly planets, but the planet of Brahman. Brahman incarnate as Shiva and Shakti, or Vishnu and Lakshmi, Brahma and Saraswati, and so on. And we can enjoy pastimes with them for a very long time, until the end of the universe. These are the two qualities or types of beings that are discussed in these sutras. But later on, he will also discuss the realizing of the qualityless Brahman, Nirguna Brahman. And what happens to that being is that he simply disappears. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> this is what happened to my sannyas guru, Jnana Shakti Swami. Jnana Shakti, when he left his body, he was just gone. I couldn't find him any place. I had to meditate for like four hours <laughs> to catch up with him. And he was like just an expanding light. Nirguna Brahman, formless Brahman. This is the ultimate destination. And even for those in the Brahma Loka, they will also realize the Nirguna Brahman, whether by sadhana, while they are staying in near in uh, while they are staying in the pure creation, or by force of the dissolution of the material world at the end of the creation. So this is what we have to look forward to. This is our reward for all the hard work. This is our escape. This is our relief. This is the cure for all suffering of material existence. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.